Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We got a real life badass in the house. Dan's a pretend one. I, I feel that uh, our guest today is a real one. Dan, I'm, I'm, I hate to do this that, to you. That reminds me of uh, my buddy uh, James used to say all the time. He was, uh, he was an NCO in my 82nd unit when I was a young private. And he was like, you know, you're not really smart. You just know how to talk well. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the difference between those two things are, but sure, let's do that. We got Pat McNamara on the show. How are you, sir? <clears throat> Rocking, bro. Thanks so much for having me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Look at your setup, dude. You've got yeah, you, yeah you've got your own uh, mics. You got everything. This like this is easy for us. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Right on. Yeah, I got my own podcast. So yeah, uh, but hey, plug it at the top. Go ahead, fire away. Yeah. So University of Badassery, the University of Badassery. <laughs> well, I mean, it's um. It's sort of a play on words, you know, what we try to, it's a, we try to help people be better people. CJ and I are the metal motivator mm -hmm. and, uh, our motto is in life, you've got to be able to kick ass. And, uh, if you want to be an ass kicker, the first ass you have to kick is your own. So I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I also like that, that goatee a lot. Is that real by Not the way? Own. Yeah, man. So I've had this look, my own look for, uh, more than a decade now. Um, yeah, goatee's real. It looks like you could stab a bear, like a like a maybe an eight hundred pound bear, and just drop it in the middle of Bozeman, Montana. Yeah, there's a little bit of product in that thing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You know? um, <laughs> otherwise, it's just a massive poof. It's just it's just a massive just a big mess. That's why I keep like my the end of a which is broom. That's why I keep my hair short because yeah. for two reasons. One, uh, it's too there's too much body. It's it's everywhere. If my hair is longer than uh, maybe inch and a quarter or so, it's just like it looks like uh, stupid. And or I have to fix it all the time. Fix, and I'm not yep. doing that. Come on. No, I, I can barely get motivated enough to get out of bed in the morning. So, yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah are, you, are you married, Pat? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm I'm loving it. Uh, sort of recently. Well, I've been together with uh, my wife for eight years and we've been married for in May. It'll be five. Okay, great. I'm, I'm sort of on the same path here. Um, mm -hmm. Me and my wife have been together for uh, each nine, I think married for seven now at this point. So right on. I, yeah. I've settled in. I don't know how old you are, but I've settled in. Like I'm not, yep. I, I'm not one of those people who's like, man, I'm looking to get divorced and find some 20 year old ass anymore. Like I'm settled in and I'm good. I feel like with COVID and, and all this shit that's going on, mm -hmm. you're pretty much uh, uh, dancing with the one that brought you at this point. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am getting to the point of settled in COVID has this has been my best year ever. I mean, absolute best year. Uh, I'm 55 years old. My wife and I have a substantial age difference. She's 30. OK. Um, yeah, we both came out of real shitty relationships. So, you know, in eight years, we haven't had a single crossword. I mean, she is my best buddy. And when lockdown happened, I was freaking absolute pig and shit. I mean, I, I was like ecstatic that I was in this lockdown that I couldn't travel. And then I was locked down with my mm. wife. Yeah. It drove her a little crazy because she missed work. I didn't, I didn't give a shit. Um, I lost a lot of work. I had to issue a lot of refunds, but I generated two new businesses during it too. And I said at the beginning during podcasts, uh, at the beginning of the COVID, what I call coronation. Yeah. Um, it, this will bring out either the best in people or the worst in people. And it's a great opportunity for self-improvement, you know, when we were locked down. Yeah, I look, I think I've improved as well. I was I felt like I could drink maybe six to seven White Claws a day. Now yeah. I, I feel real confident with with 12 with a full <laughs> case. Yeah. Um, and that's not, that's a humble brag, obviously. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a better man than most. You get it. I'm sure you hear that all the time. Yeah, man. I, uh, my, my recycle bin was filled, you know, every week, just filled to the brim with empty bottles, whether IPA bottles or bourbon bottles, but, uh, what kind of bourbon? I, uh, I've got, I, 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 I'm teamed up with a Taconic out of New York, out of, uh, oh, yeah. New York. Yeah, yeah. 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 Freaking really probably I'm a bourbon guy. Um, and they're, they're a, a host of my podcast, but you know, even still, it's definitely 
one of my, if not my favorite bourbon of all time. Oh, it's made in upstate New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, I've, I've had it actually, but I had it in New York. Um, are you guys in every state right now? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, the, it, it's hard to, uh, for liquor to get out to every every state. That's the reason I bring it up. Because um, everybody right. asks, like, are you in New Mexico or Nevada? And it's like, hey, man, the liquor laws are different in every single state. Trying right. to get right. bottles of liquor into every state, like you got to jump through all their hoops, whatever mm -hmm. religion that existed in the 1800s that is still on their bylaws, that type of shit. Uh, yep. it's, it's difficult, man. It's just to jump into liquor. People don't understand. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. No. Well, I mean, it, it sounds, I mean, I was drinking a lot during coronation, but I also, um, I was probably in the best, some of the best fitness shape of my life too, because I established a driveway gym and I will never go to a gym again. I will never, ever go to a gym again. I, I dig my driveway gym and, um, I've got everything there that I need, um, rain or shine. I don't give a shit what the weather is. I'm going to be hitting it. And, uh, I was eating my diet was ridiculous. It's always been ridiculous, but I went even overboard during chronication with nothing but just meat and veg. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was drinking a lot, but I was still super healthy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, to, uh, to hear it. yeah, that sounds a lot like bounce, cognitive yeah. dissonance. Right. But, yes, uh, absolutely. Whatever. Cognitive dissonance. Yep. Let's, let's do this. Uh, clash of realities. I am in full blown denial as well. Uh, <laughs> I do like the label on this uh, taconic. It's just mm -hmm. a dog. Yeah. Yep. Dogs are better than people. People are garbage yep. uh, by and large. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Dan's just, uh, he's got two dogs and uh, you've never seen a happier man to go home at night. And I understand it. Uh, I understand it. So you were in the military for what, 22 years, special ops? Yeah, man. Yep. 22 years. And I was, I was fortunate in that it was, it was all special ops time. Mm. I mean, um, and, you know, that being said, there was a lot of freaking luck involved because I was one of those SF babies. Mm. So, you know, just a lot of luck. And I mean, by the time I was 22, I had two SF MOSs. I was both Halo and Combat Dive qualified at 22 years. Holy old. shit. Yeah, man, I was fast tracking right off. Uh, so, yep, 22 years. You grow up in 05. You grow up really fast. There was, a, there was an interview I read about you uh, where you had an interesting quote that said, I'm not a fan of professional veterans damn um, straight bro yeah can you explain that to the audience 80 percent of our audience is military and first responder and uh yep. I, I i found that quote to be um super curious and, and I, I wanted to get a, a definition from you on that well i haven't put words to defining it but but i could draw some examples so the professional vet is the guy who did that you know one term one uh one tour duty or mm. one term one enlistment and um, he rests on his laurels. He expects that everybody owes him something because he served his country. You know, and this guy may not have deployed. He may have been a pencil pusher. Mm. He could have been a badass, too. You know, he could have been in a ranger battalion for uh, that, that one tour of duty. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I mean, he rests on his laurels and he expects that. He, he is owed that veteran's parking spot in the Harris Teeter and that he should get 10% <laughs> off at, at Lowe's, you know, that kind of shit. Yeah. And um, that's all he's got. There's, no, there's, you know, he's got no tomorrow. It's all about yesterday. And I really freaking hate those guys. I'm not a rest on your laurels, motherfucker. I was a badass yesterday, but I'm a badass tomorrow. And I'm going to continue being a badass and helping other guys, you know, helping not just my fellow vets, but, um, just people, man, because I believe that most people are decent. I, I truly believe that. Of course, you know, in this country, the squeaky wheel gets the oil mm. and we hear it's polarizing. You know, all the shit people, it's polarizing and it, and it makes good news. So you think there's more of that, mm. but but I don't think so. I think that most people, you know, in in our republic are good people. And I want to be around to motivate and help them as much as I can. Yeah, man, I, I agree. Like, I, I try to think that most people are great people. And then you pop over onto Twitter and you're like, ah, <laughs> maybe I was wrong about that. Yep. Maybe most people are shitbags. Yeah, they uh, are. Uh, but I think yep. it's I, I think it's just <laughs> online, to be honest with you. Right. Because I think if uh, you have a lot of these conversations in real life, um, obviously, nobody's going to say shit to you what the, they would say online. Um, have you ever ran into that in real life where somebody came up and said, fuck? 
fuck you, Pat. No, no, mm -mm. nope, hell no. But <laughs> online, all the time, all the time, because I have a a pretty substantial following on my YouTube channel on a, and on Instagram, and all the time. And that's really and my, funny, by the way. Did you ever did you see that meme a couple of weeks ago? It wasn't really a meme, but it was uh, somebody was talking shit about Paul Felder. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, on the yeah, internet. Yeah. And it was like, would you say that to his face? And the guy was like, no, he'd kick my ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. but I'm, he's not in my face right now. So fuck him. So fuck him. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's pretty funny. And the funny thing is my content is super clean. You know, I, I don't ruffle any feathers. I don't get into politics. I, I put out just good, clean content because I have a. Uh, it, it, a very diverse audience. I have a lot of little kids follow me, mm. so I don't even cuss on my um, on my feeds. You know, not even shit or or ass. What about cum? Um, <clears throat> no, no. I, no now there there is an exception depending on <laughs> who I'm talking to because the thing is that could be a term of endearment. That's true if they're Australian, uh, uh, especially. Yeah, man, I had to British tell my Australian, mom that because yeah. my mom was watching the show one day and she was like, "Look, I love it. I think Dan is great." Um, but when he says the word cunt, like it's such a strong <laughs> word. And I was like, well, it's a term of endearments. And uh, she was like, man, I just think I'm getting older. And I was yeah, like, she is getting older. That's what I said. Yeah. Which is uh, to making her hotter to Giorgio, which is you got to keep an eye out. For We've that. got a producer here who only goes for late 50s, uh, <laughs> early 60s. He's 30 years old. Like, yes, yeah, wow. so you're Pat. You're almost in his wheelhouse now. I don't know if he's going. I don't, I don't know what his wow. deal is. Yeah, but. like your wife would have to age double. No, right, I mean, for Giorgio wow. to be interested. Pat, you're in your mid 50s, yeah. so you're almost yeah, there. Yeah. If yep. she has Pat's abs, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, your, your abs are insane. Uh, Giorgio mm -hmm. was just talking about it. All right. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't, I mean, That's, it is at your age, dude. Is it, is it all natural? Or is it just eating and working out? Are you, uh, you want anything else? No, you know, people ask me that all the time. Yeah. And I know there's going to come a time. When, where I want to supplement with um, TRT, uh, some more, right, and right, whatever. Right. Yeah, I don't. I just don't know anything about it. Mm. But you know, I could look in the mirror and contort my body and go, "Holy shit, I look like a fifty-five-year-old man." You know right. what I mean? <laughs> um, because there is there is a little bit of um, you know some shit is droopy and, and flabby, but uh, um, I were I. I I am very disciplined with my diet. I am very disciplined working out and, uh, and I hit it, I hit it hard and, and I hit and I've got to, cause I have my own system, the uh, combat strength training mm -hmm. program. <clears throat> and I am kind of a testimony to that program because, you know, when I retired, I retired broken up for mm -hmm. reconstructive surgeries, 13 broken bones. So, you know, mil military guys tend to have been ridden a lot harder, you know, or LEOs. You know, uh, there's a lot of mileage on those bodies. So I started working out smart late thirties in my late thirties, you know, so I was getting close to re the retirement age mm -hmm. and, um, man, I've, I've, I found my zone, you know, and, uh, I work real freaking smart and I trick the body. There's a lot of muscle confusion and stuff like that. And I try to recognize voids because here's the thing you could work out all your life like do body bodybuilding style stuff. Right. But what happens is you fall into a rut of complacent adaptation, mm. you know, where you're, you're in a routine. And I like to say routine is a playground of a dull mind. And if you're just doing the same kind of movements all the time, it, it, you're going to fade away. Well, no, we so just, I, we just saw the actual dangers of it with Clay Thompson from the warriors. Right. Yeah. So he yeah. spent the entire last calendar year uh, trying to heal up his left knee. Yep. That yep. was fucked during the torn playoffs ACL. last year, torn yep. ACL. And you spend all that time focusing on that one area, building it up. The stronger you build muscles around uh, core muscle and core tendon and core uh, other tissue like that that's sensitive and without paying attention to that specific group, yep. then you effectively weaken it. Even if it doesn't weaken on its own, in relative proportion to the other strength in your body, it gets weakened. So when you start doing your normal movements or athletic movements throughout the day, that part is weaker than everything else. So yep. maybe your left leg twists harder than your fucking right foot is able to take and your Achilles snaps. And that's what happened to Clay Thompson, right? Yeah, and you're, and you're overcompensating for yeah. it. And uh, It happens yeah, in sports all the time. It's Achilles. Yeah, it um, happens in sports all the time. I and mean, it's you're right, it's a big problem. I wonder, so you say you've got your own training program, but obviously you have mm -hmm. to borrow. Nobody's inventing new shit. So you're, you're, you're like everybody else, piecing together the good stuff and jettisoning the bad stuff. So I wonder if you use things like uh, Tabata, which is like a Japanese uh, um, 
uh, cardio. It's about five to 15 minutes, oh, depending I, on how I know you do it. Uh, yeah, I know. 30 what you're seconds I, on, 30 I, seconds yeah. off. It's where all this hit high intensity bullshit came from in America, yep. basically. It's where yeah. it started from, but it's it's really good. So is that the kind of stuff you're doing or what is it exactly? Uh, d- d- not necessarily. I do do intervals. I don't need to say Tabata or whatever the fuck, you know. It doesn't but, matter. Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but I, I love interval training. Mm. But what I do, I think my system is different in that. I break the work week down into a power day, a strength day, a speed and quickness, hypertrophy and skills. So that's how the work week. So if I've got five days, I'm going to stick to that schedule. <clears throat> so I could already program like today was a hypertrophy day. Mm. Boring, but necessary. And it's very simple. It just ain't easy. Hypertrophy sucks. If you do it right, it freaking sucks really bad. Um, and then I only work out about 30 minutes at a whack, <clears throat> but the thing is, during that time, it's absolute work because I, I have a formula that says to work in anaerobic chunks in circuit to near metabolic threshold to meet anaerobic goal. So you're, you're working during that 30 minutes and you're taking minimal breaks. Like, for instance, on power day, you know, rate of force production, no speed, no power. So you've got to take those 15 second to 30 second breaks every once in a while so you could get into the next movement and attack it mm. for that one <clears throat> full minute. Um, but yeah, so I, intervals are freaking awesome, man. I love them. And uh, my cardio, because of that, because it's a 30 minute continuous, like I don't go, I don't pound pavement anymore. I do sprints, but I don't right. pound pavement. You know, I'm not going to go out. I mean, we figured that out a long time ago, right? For most human beings, particularly people that are, uh, that are, I guess, not endomorphs people that are that have meat on their bones running yep. is kind of pointless to be honest running long distance is kind of pointless i mean it right. doesn't there's no there's no cardiovascular difference between running for 20 minutes and running for two hours you you, right. you, you reach it there's a there's a peak at some point where you just continue doing the same thing over and over yeah and, and it's not it's not necessarily life-saving you know i i, I think running a 400 is badass mm. you know because that's like metabolic threshold shit and i mean last year I, I'm, I'm still I'm still doing a sub minute 400 sub minute 400. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Yeah, sub, that, sub minute 400. That is, that is absolutely depressed. I feel awful about my life and my <laughs> yeah. existence. So can you run that. a four minute mile or what? Yeah. Are you Roger? Uh, Roger no, Pierce? no, hell no, hell no, 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 no. See that, that 400 is, um, that's metabolic threshold. Yeah, shit, it's all right? yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. A, and there's a lot of, it's all about timing. You know, it, it, it's where, where are you going 70% and can you, can you kick that up to 80%? Because you can't, nobody could do a hundred percent for a minute. You know, there's no freaking way. What are we good for? hundred percent, maybe 20, I don't know, 20 seconds, hundred percent, you know, something like that. Yeah. I don't know what it is for us, for us relatively fit human beings. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, no. Uh, but my point was too, if, if I'm going to, like, if I went on a, a three day vacation with my wife on a beach and said, you know what, I'm going to go for a run. I, I still have no problem running four or five miles even though i don't do it um really because it, yeah 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 because because of that that system that i'm training in my heart rate is up that whole 30 minutes you know it's 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 moving very well um and i'm huffing and puffing during that time and and i throw like i said because it's, mo- it's mostly interval stuff minimal breaks and you're working for between 25 and 35 minutes and I've gotten creative with the driveway gym stuff because I don't have, I have minimal equipment, but I don't need a lot of shit, man. Like I mm. got a golf cart, you know? So on like strength days, like today mm. during hypertrophy, I, I put that golf cart in tow mode and pushed it up my driveway and then, and then slowly let it back downhill, pushed it back up the driveway, slowly let it back downhill. I'll do, I have a, I live on a cul-de-sac that's a quarter mile long. Yep. And I'll do sprints with my bicycle up that thing. So talk about hitting that freaking metabolic threshold, man. You know, when you're sprinting a quarter mile uphill on a bike, um, and I've been doing that since, since coronation started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And man, I, 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 I reached another level of fitness during this thing. And I feel really, really good right now because I've been, I think mixing it up is very important. And, and a lot of people don't mix it up when they work out. They, they just go into routine mode yeah i would say the vast majority of people have probably five to seven lifts they do plus cardio mm-hmm. and that's all they do a variety right. of that throughout every week yeah forever probably yeah yep. and and they live in a what i call a sagittalistic environment where everything's this way 
in that way. And there's very little transverse. Mm. See, I'm, I'm big on the transverse plane of motion stuff. And that's where, you know, the abs come in because every day I'm doing transverse plane of motion stuff. So, and I'd like to say that in, in the transverse plane lives life saving and ass kicking. Um, because that's if you're saving somebody's life or kicking somebody's ass, it's all transverse plane of motion. It's probably the most important plane of motion to work. And it's also the most neglected when people exercise. Yeah. For me, it's every day, every day I'm hitting that transverse plane for, for hip, for back, you know, for, uh, because, you know, ex- it, it, it's called fitness, not brokenness, right? Mm. So exercise is about self-preservation, longevity, first and foremost, you know, stronger, longer motion is lotion. So in, in order to keep that body or that combat chassis mo- moving, we've got to, we've got to have healthy hips and healthy back, you know, and it just healthy, just consider joint health in in general now joint health that's uh that's not a problem for military people right <laughs> <laughs> jumping out of planes and carrying right. my 150 pounds of gear around that wasn't a yep. big, jumping off the back of lmtvs oh, and yeah man yeah. yeah i mean so you know and and imagine like when i came in in the 80s we were still doing pt with boots on we were yeah. you know with five mile runs with boots on that's still. true my, my dad did airborne school with jump boots I'm like, yeah, well, now I'm thinking about that. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, man. Not so, trying to run you know, five and, miles in jump boots. Dude, right. No, screw that, man. Talk every, about, everybody had shin splints. Everybody. Yeah. Every single everybody day. You run knees. five miles every single day for three weeks in jump boots. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not fun for anybody. Although the guys in uh, the original airborne units in, uh, in South Carolina, Curry, he and all that shit, they fucking did it. They ran up and down that goddamn hill every day in jump right. boots. So fuck Jesus. that. I mean, double fuck that. I'm not doing any of that yeah. shit doesn't make any sense yeah i mean look you had a cool guy job you were you were a delta guy how did you yep. not get injured and you're still able to do all of this shit at 55 i mean it, it seems crazy no no I, I i no like i said i i would i've been injured i, I i've had four reconstructive surgeries all from duty related stuff uh-huh so this shoulder done this this arm right there see that scar that, so that i was a toe jumper there oh mm. shit uh, so pulled my bicep into my forearm dislocated shoulder broken ribs concussion that was my first of many injuries my right knee i had total knee reconstruction acl replacement um you said my, you got towed what happened dude i was in jump school man oh shit it I happened was a freaking retard. yeah yeah second jump Second jump. I, I was 18 years old, never been really injured before. Right. And boom. I mean, so I have no idea, but the, the, you know, I probably fucked up and threw the static line at the jump master or something like that, but it went under my reserve and around my arm. Holy Ooh. shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I was, one, I was, check this out. You know, you know that area, you know, um, fryer drop zone. Oh, I was yeah. one of the first out. I was one of the first mm-hmm. out. And I was one of the last ones to hit the ground. I towed oh, almost shit. all the way across from. Did you? Did they? Did they finally unwrap you? Or did you have to cut no, your no, static it, line? It, no, no, it, it it came loose. If if they cut me loose, because this is before that retrieval. Just, that this is before that right. retrieval system, right? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Because I was instantly shock mode, you know. Yeah. Because the pain was just excruciating. Um, I've seen and, a lot of weird uh, shit in jump school. One of the, one one guy was a fucking E seven, and he walked up to the door to the to the and he handed it across his body he handed as soon as he handed it across his body i'm like this dude's about to get fucked up and i just stood there and watched him get his fucking helmet ripped completely off of his head as he jumped i mean i guess you're fine as long as you don't go unconscious i mean technically you'd be probably fine either way if you're yeah mine mine came mine came loose thankfully it just came undone so you didn't have to deploy your reserve and all that shit nope and i don't think i would have had the uh the, the frame of mind yeah to, to honestly have done yeah i mean that's that's uh it was particularly in your second mind. jump out of an air yep. like I, it was my, not on my, mind. my first couple of jumps i was just like trying to take it all in mm-hmm. like what what is exactly happening right here because you you go through ground tower and, and jump week ground and tower week are just nonsense you don't remember any of that shit then you get in the plane you're like all right well i don't know what the fuck i'm doing just do what the guy in front of you does right yeah i hope it works out because when the 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 time that i jumped out of a plane i was tandem with a gay guy in van nuys um california (laughs) and he was behind me so right on is it weird that i felt that i was in more danger than you guys were probably i'm starting a tandem (laughs) jump school where you face each other the whole way down (laughs) oh man it's actually the greatest idea ever that way you're forced to just you take you take mushrooms and then 45 minutes later you hook up chest to chest rig jump out and just like Try to have a conversation on the way down. 
Oof, God, that would be miserable, wouldn't it? Or you record hot ones on the way down. Or, or you're 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 going face to face with Hillary Clinton, just all Oof. the way down, and it's just, she just ate Chinese food like a buffet. Um, and you're now that wouldn't be bad face. because then I get to see the terror in her eyes yeah. too. You know, <laughs> I, that would be kind of cool as an experienced jumper. You know, I would love to see the terror. You know, that's a good point. That's a good point you make. People ask me all the time what I do for quote unquote fun now, and they would expect to hear. Like whenever somebody invites me to go do something crazy, like, hey, let's go fucking whitewater rafting or let's go jump out of planes. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. I'll do it, but I'm not going to be excited about it. I mean, it's just, I've right. done that shit a good jillion times. It's not, mm -hmm. I know what to expect now. It's not fun anymore, but people that don't, I, I do enjoy going jumping with people who've never jumped before. That is really interesting because they don't understand the physics of the whole thing. So mm -hmm. you, is, jumping out of an airplane is pretty goddamn safe. Com compared yeah, to yeah. any other activity that has any amount of risk to associated mm -hmm. with it, statistically speaking, jumping out of a plane is pretty safe. And uh, Pat, show your arm again, and then say that statement right. one more time. Oh, totally. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. right. So anyway, uh, so the arm, the knee, mm -hmm. and then this shoulder, uh, I had uh, surgery on it, and then uh, lower back L5S1 discectomy, and then almost had to get my neck um rebuilt as well because i've got herniated disc mm. uh c c5 c6 something like that <clears throat> but you know neck surgery is very invasive mm. they can't go in from the back they have to go in from the front push everything aside uh. and then attack it that way so i opted out of that but um it feels pretty good now i mean my hands fall asleep at night you know when i'm sleeping uh, every once in a while, I'll go get a shot in the neck, you know, the steroid shot in the neck um, at the pain clinic. But and then 13 broken bones, all total uh, uh, umbilical hernia, three concussions. So, I'll, uh, no, I've accumulated a lot of injuries uh, over that course of 22 years. Yeah. And, that, and that's that's kind of where I was I was heading with this earlier was I. I it's amazing you're in such great shape now uh, at this mm -hmm. age because usually somebody who's gone through what you've gone through would be in a fucking wheelchair at this point. Yep. Um, yeah. Clearly you were not. Um, yep. Was that part of the mindset of it was overcoming these injuries and saying, all right, cool, man, I'm going to crush the rest of life uh, because nobody else probably could have gotten through what I've gotten through? Yeah, you know, like I said, I started working out smarter in my late 30s because you know, my, my peer group right ahead of me was jacked up and they weren't, they, their mobility was shot mm. and they were just kind of limping around. They were old men in their forties, bro. Yeah. Old men. And I did that scared. That scared me because I was still in, in good shape, even though I had a lot of surgeries and stuff. I was, you know, fitness was always a thing for me starting at probably like 15, 16 years old. I started late. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the fitness game but when i was 16 i i made a massive metamorphosis <clears throat> so it's always been a thing and it saved me it saved my ass through a lot of uh of, of these injuries and it and it helped me heal faster uh and um and probably mitigated a lot of injuries too you know the, the just by the virtue of the fact that I, I have good structure, sound bones, good muscular development and all that stuff. It probably, it's probably saved my ass more than, more than once. And, uh, so yeah, man. Um, yep. Yeah. You're yeah, still, look, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're a beautiful man. Yep. Um, right. you know, <laughs> yeah, you look like you, you could still play in Metallica and, mm -hmm. uh, and absolutely crush enter Sandman. What's your, what's your go-to tunes workout wise these days? We're looking for I've new got a, shit. I've, you bro, you got to check out my playlist on Spotify. Um, I call it the Metal Mac Attack. Yeah. Well, at, well yeah. Is that what is that what it's called? How do we look that yeah, up? Yeah, Metal Mac Metal Mac Attack. Yeah, Metal Mac Attack. Uh, uh, Spotify playlist. But uh, go to. I'm still right here. You know, I'm. Uh, I grew up with Judas Priest and everything about him. Yeah. I just freaking dig. Even their last album, I thought kicked freaking ass. Rob Halford's the coolest gay guy on the planet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> i'm glad you said it because that, that was the thing is like when he came out as gay people were like oh shit was Dude, he metal, the metal, or metal? He's, yeah. he's the metal god man he is the metal god but uh you know i like a lot of the um i i, I like it my metal to be discernible uh -huh. i don't like it all over the map i don't like it to be uh like 
collage, you know, or, um, so you're not a fan of like uh, deathcore, hardcore shit like that. You're more no, like no, no. I'm more like like Chimera, Lamb of God. Yeah, Lamb of God uh, is the that's best. Dan's favorite. Yeah, they're the best yeah, metal band of all time. I don't think it's even Dude, close. They are, honest. you know, as far as like mu- what, as far as musicians go, mm-hmm. un freaking believable yeah, songwriting, all yeah. that. I really miss that uh, Chris Adler's gone mm-hmm. because he's the best drummer in the business, yeah. and I'm not sure if he's still uh, with with Megadeth, but good for them. Because it, man, dude, yes, musicians like Willie Adler and Mark Morton watching those guys play, like when they're putting out stuff on the interwebs right now mm, and yeah. they're playing remotely, uh, doing these like virtual concerts where, you know, each guy's in their own space, in their own house or whatever. It, un-freaking believable. You could, you could become an instant, even if you're not a metalhead, you could become an instant fan if you understand music. Yeah, they're, because, yeah. they're extremely talented dude. dude. Un freaking unbelievable. I mean, if you, you know, look- and, and I, I play some, I play drums and guitar. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you, especially if you play, you gain a much greater appreciation for somebody who could, who really knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. The, know, it's like, damn. The other nights, uh, when I came back from work, it was super late. Um, it was a crazy one on PBS. It was Metallica and then the San Francisco uh, Orchestra. Philharmonic, yeah. Philharmonic, that was a, yeah. That was yeah, a, yeah. That, they're one of uh, just a few bands who have done that. The other one yeah. that's really remarkable is Bring Me the Horizon. It's more like new metal stuff. Right. But they did one of their, they did a lot of their greatest hits with, a, with, a, uh, with an orchestra as well. And people don't understand. Look, uh, uh, Metallica's drummer. Yes. Gets a little bit of heat. Because Lars. He's kind of a D bag. Um, and (laughs) that's being polite. His, his reaction to the whole Napster thing was, uh, turned a lot of people off to him, Mm -hmm, I think. mm -hmm. And he's not the best drummer in metal. He's not even close. He's a good, he's a good rhythm keeper and that's about it. But aside from him, the rest of the guys in that band are fucking excellent musicians. Every, well, I mean, Burton was great. Obviously every, every bass player they've had is great, including the, the current guy who's who's one of the longest tenured bass players probably in all of metal yeah obviously yeah. headfield's good and uh kirk hammett's one of the best guitarists that exists but you the, the amount of talent it takes to do what they did is impressive in a way that people that don't play music don't understand you know what i mean yeah man yeah. uh I, they're one of those bands that is is great together as a band i can't imagine them without each other you know no. <laughs> well you, it's funny you say that because I, it's either uh james hetfield or um Lars said dude individually we're really not that good mm. in music really, <laughs> but together we're we're fucking metallica yeah you yeah. know like yeah. it, it, but it's so freaking true you know but it, james hetfield to me is like the quintessential metal rock star mm. because he is playing real complex riffs yeah and 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 uh i mean if you if you actually watch him playing he's carrying a lot of the tunes where mm. kirk isn't you know, and and he's singing and his voice doesn't suck. He's actually singing. You know, the other guy who blows my mind who could do that is Dave Mustaine. I mean, Dave Mustaine's the- probably the the most talent. Well, either him or uh, homeboy from Primus, the bass player from Primus and singer are probably the two most individually talented people that have ever been successful in metal. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mustaine, no, I, Mustaine. I, I would agree with that one. But but, yeah. you know, individual success doesn't particularly in bands the same way in sports doesn't always translate into a lot of money or. Mm-hmm prolonged uh like championships or or platinum records or whatever the case yeah is. you got to find the right band there's a guy named michael angelo michael space angelo obviously not his real name sure uh he's one of the professors at guitar institute of technology if, you, if that tells you anything he's one of the most technically proficient guitar players that's ever existed and nobody outside of a couple of guitar players could tell you who the fuck he is yeah you know I, I mean i don't know who he is yeah you'll never know no you'll never know you'll, you won't even remember to look this up later no that's no, how no. <laughs> uh, that's how forgettable it is but his technical skill is so good but yeah you're right it's it's funny they say that in metallica because kirk hammond and and, and uh and headfield are both actually really good guitar players yeah. and they're just being humble but yeah individually who gives a shit yeah, exactly i you know and i often wonder like who those guys look up to and um I, that's my Satriani. next question yeah, Satriani. Yeah. Um, it's one of my questions for you too. Like, I, I consider Jeff you Beck. one of the most like motivational dudes uh, in the yeah. military space right now. Is there uh, people that you look up to where you're like, shit, man, this guy motivates me, and I listen to his podcasts or um, uh, I follow him on Instagram? Like, is there guys like that for you? I, I wonder. 
Um, there, there, there are a couple and, and they're not like outstanding individuals. The guys I look up to are the guys who have, uh, have had, had to, had to deal with extreme adversity or maybe extreme weight loss and, and they're getting after, or they were in a real dark place, you know, like depression and shit like that. Or, or they've, um, grew up with a real super shitty childhood, you know, and they've beaten all that stuff like the professional athletes and stuff like that. Nah, I mean, they've been coddled and, you know, they've had their dicks sucked their most mm. of their life. So n- none of them. Um, but the average Joe motivates me mm-hmm. when he tells me that I'm motivating him and that he's lost 30 pounds. And that's the, the people. <sighs> Let me reset here. I'm ADD like a motherfucker. <laughs> so people ask all the time, Hey bro, what motivates you? How, what, what how are you, how are you able to get after it day after day? I said, well, you do. <laughs> if I am motivating you, you're motivating me. So now I have an obligation to continue that, you know, because I've obviously lit a fire under your ass and you're following suit and you're, you're adding uh, tinder and, and kindling and logs to that fire. So that's where I came up. I came up with this line of keep the blaze alive mm-hmm. um, because I, I like to fire people up, you know, and maybe nurture that ember mm. and uh, and create a flame. But once it's self-sustaining and they're they're doing it themselves, man, that motivates the hell out of me. So the average Joe, you know, the dudes who follow me and uh, they say, man, you're motivating the hell out of me. Those those guys motivate me because I'm I have an obligation, man. I, I, I have a duty. So when they ask what keeps you motivated, you do. That's a very diplomatic answer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You uh, didn't say anybody's actual name, so you don't have to explain to anybody else later why you didn't say their name. It's Mr. <laughs> T, right? right? Yeah. Like, it's got to be Mr. T. He's on that list. Yeah. Right? Well, I don't know. Tyson's yeah. about to fight again. So, uh, yeah, maybe I know. it's Tyson. Yeah. Tyson and Roy Jones, man. A couple of my all-time favorites. I don't know how that's going to w- shake out, man. I Look, Tyson is... Uh, I don't know if Tyson understands that it's an exhibition. He does right. not look like he's training it's, for an exhibition. No, it's like fucking Mr. T and Rocky III. He might, yeah, dude. He might kill... Roy Jones. The, but I will say this. Roy June Jones fought almost until he was 50 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, as far as uh, running around the ring for a few rounds and getting Tyson um, gassed, smoked. Um, I, smoked. I think that's what's probably going to happen. And then, you know, mm-hmm. he'll throw in some jabs or whatever. What I'm going to tune in for and what I'm paying for, my, my American dollars for, is just that one shot. If Tyson were to land it and just end his life, like mm-hmm. that would make my Thanksgiving. And I know that's sick. Uh, and mm-hmm. kind of dark, but you know, that's Thanksgiving. No, that'd be cool. Right. That'd be cool too. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, I, 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 I a hundred percent agree. Um, I don't think they're going to like, I don't think Roy would give him the opportunity to mix it up though. You know, I and then Ty- Tyson's probably only good for like a minute and a half. I don't even think a full round going at a, a like a real boxer's tempo. Mm. I don't, I don't think he could sustain it. You know, I, I tend to agree. I'd say, well, we got some producers uh, behind the camera here. Look up and see if there's odds on mybookie.com uh, to see if, because uh, we, we have a, a, a sports show. Uh, so mybookie yep. is one of our, our sponsors. Look up, if, if there's odds on this, I want to bet on that fight, my, mybookie.com. Uh, gonna, by the way, promo code Drinking Bros will double your deposit. We have a couple sponsors that uh, pay for the show. If you don't mind, Pat, we're going to drop them real quick and then rock and roll, feel bro. free to drop one of your own. You're in the podcast space. First and foremost, uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros finest mattresses in the land if you remember the military or first responder a teacher or work in the government you get 30 percent off everything in the store that's pillows sheets mattresses adjustable bases you name it uh and they're gonna have a monster black friday sale coming up uh and this month is like for us dummy civilians we get 30 percent off of everything too so i feel like a real american hero at uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros they always have a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest on that. Uh, so you can gangbang all of those deals with their no interest program at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, last but not least here, D'Anthony, is uh, First Leaf. Mm. Uh, we love the First Leaf wine. Try firstleaf.com yeah. forward slash drinking bros. Big fan of First Leaf. Uh, it's for, for those of you who uh, either really enjoy wine or want to. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a very good way to, to work your way into the wine club, uh, 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 I guess, field. Uh, so what Six you'll do for yeah, 30, 30 bucks. The first thing you do is you answer, you, you go through a little quiz. Yep. 
tell them the kind of flavors you like, and they ask you uh, uh, an assortment of questions to determine that, and then they send you wine that they think fit those flavor profiles, six of them for 30 bucks, basically. Yes. Nice. And uh, then you drink all that wine, preferably the same day. Yep. No, drink, yeah. drink the wine as you drink it. You have, you have about a month to drink it. Then you go back on the site, answer questions based on the wine you, you drink, mm -hmm. and then they will start to custom tailor the wine shipments to your particular flavor palette. Correct. It's Correct. Correct. And it's the and best. It's the best uh, wine club I've ever been a part. And they shit. The wine is from all over the world, so uh, it, it's the best in the biz. Um, uh, I love it, man. I, I just ordered. I just got mine yesterday. My my new monthly shipment yesterday. Yeah, I got one on the way right just now. Just in time for the holidays. Go to tryfirstleaf.com forward slash drinking bros today. Yeah, six it's bottles for thirty dollars. It's also a good gift it's to give great people, gift, if you're, especially if you're, the holidays. Like if you're either either way, if you're looking to give somebody a, a pricey gift where yeah. you want to give them three to six bottles a month for the rest of the year, if it's a big gift yeah. for a spouse or, or a loved one or whatever the case is, or if you just want to buy six bottles and give them always gifts too. I mean, there's plenty of ways to go about this this it year. It depends on, on how rich you are. Ooh, you rich. Uh, what about you, Pat? Uh, you got, you got uh, any sponsors you want to throw out? Uh, what about your well, company? I got the, the you know, the Taconic, um, also a really good gift. Yeah, it is. That bourbon. For you, uh, for you bourbon guys. Where is it available? And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm i pretty sure. See, I, I, don't, I don't order it. <laughs> mm, I, I'm, 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 I'm really sucking bad as, uh, as pushing their product right now. <laughs> but, you know, if you get on their site, the Taconic uh, Distillery site, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you could figure it out there. Um, T A C O N I C, and uh, I, I'm a coffee guy too. Uh, I'm part of the in Invader uh, crew, and I have my own blend. Mm. Uh, Look at you, the Bla yeah. Blaze Ops blend. Yep. So double dark because I love. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a coffee guy. It's funny we had we had a discussion. You know, if you had to give up one beer or coffee, which one would be? And I had to really think about that because I'm a beer queer. I mm. love my beer. I would give up beer. I don't think I could start my day without coffee. No, I could. There's look, I could switch to uh, Adderall. <laughs> oh, it, but, but right. to wake up to. Yeah. Doing a couple lines of Adderall to wake up to is uh, it's not as good as coffee. I like the I love the flavor of coffee, but I need to be I, I hate the flavor. of. Coffee. I have to do something to make the voices in my head go away. Obviously. So I have to start drinking pretty much immediately when I wake up. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. what I, I mean, I drink Black Rifle, obviously, every oh, single day. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I add whatever I add to it. Let's just <laughs> let's just keep it there. <laughs> Because I'm not promoting binge drinking with Black Rifle Coffee. God damn right. It's Drink not like it. you're throwing some screwball whiskey in there for the holidays. Actually, um, Black Rifle, uh, uh, if you like the darker roast, if you like Murdered Out or uh, any of those darker roasts, yeah. add screwball whiskey to it. It's, it's really great. fucking good. It's great. It's really good. Pat, now that you're in the, in the podcast space, um, you know you know the world. Uh, is, it, is it strange? You've worked with arguably the best at this point, right? You did Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan is is kind of the king of our industry here. Uh, what did you learn from that experience that you applied to your own show? Uh, I, I liked the beginning, you know, the intro. Mm -hmm. We just we just started we just started talking. Mm. You know, there was no there was no real intro. I thought that was cool. Joe's a really good guy in that he's um, he's interested, therefore he is interesting. Mm. You know, he knows something about everything, e even a little bit. But he knows something about everything. And I think that's I think that's a good, you know, as a host of a podcast to be interested. So that way um, you can you can drive a conversation. Yep. Where you could you could adjust it. You know, it's mal it's malleable and you could participate in that uh, in that conversation, mm. too. I mean, like you, you guys are this is obviously a great venue right here, too. Because the discourse, I mean, we've been all over the map, mm. you know, in, in this whatever, 45 minutes we've been chatting. Um, and, I, and I like that. Instead of sticking to one particular topic, I think we've talked metal, working out, booze. <laughs> um, we've talked injuries. Um, I We're going to get know, to so, porn, obviously. It'll be, right, it's right, usually yeah, with yeah. us, it's porn and then Anne Frank after that. Mm. <laughs> um, and, you know, I obviously I, I want to know when the last time you read her diary was. RIP, by the yeah, way. Yeah, RIP. Gone too soon. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time you, 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 you breezed through Anne Frank's diary? Me? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd never have. Really? 
Mm-mm. It's a uh, it's a good read. Um, I would really? recommend it for the holidays. It's uh, yeah, right. just sit down and, and uh, read it to some kid. <laughs> totally kidding. You know what? In real life, though, <laughs> like a, a really interesting thing might be to read some of the uh, the 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 legal papers. Uh, I don't know if they were all burned or whatever. But the legal challenges to uh, the rise of Hitler and shit like that and the, and the brown shirts, that might be interesting to see what the warning signs of shit like that were. Because we, mm-hmm. we, people are so hyperbolic these days about anytime anybody does anything, they're like, oh, he's trying to, trying to name himself king or try, he's yeah. a tyrant, he's a fascist. Like, shut the, you don't know what fascism looks like, bitch. No. Why don't we, we and, and it's funny, uh, uh, kids in school these days, in middle school and elementary school, they don't know what the Holocaust is. So yeah, man, the they biggest, have no idea. the biggest example <laughs> of fascism in history and one that played out on the world stage and over the course of about 10 years, it took them to come to power. That's a lot of good research we can do on how to prevent that shit from ever happening again. And for some reason, we don't ever want to talk about it. It's weird. You yep. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It's, I don't it, understand it's that. sad too. It's yeah. sad. It is sad. I mean, it's not a, it's not all about, uh, p- people, you know, obviously associated with the Holocaust, but the Nazis were a political party. They right. came to power by and large by legal means. Right. right. And if they could do it there, it can happen. If you can if you can come to power with an organization like that through more or less legal means, that's a problem. Yeah. We need to understand how that happened and then prevent that shit from happening in the future. And from either side, whether it's fascism or or socialism, communism, either way. We have to understand how that shit happens. I mean, every other kind of disease, if you want to call it that, we would look into it, what causes it, and try to learn how to prevent that shit from happening, right? Yeah. But uh, this one, we've not. No. And we keep making the same mistakes over and over. You know, and, and it's weird. You brought that up. Um, <laughs> look, we're a comedy show, obviously, but um, there was, uh, I, I did read the JFK files that were released from Trump. Um, uh, those those records and everything, um, and I was I, I was genuinely surprised uh, leafing through those where um, th- there were some things that I didn't know about our country that I, I didn't think we we would do and our own government would do. One of them that was in there was that um, the FBI was planning on planting bombs in uh, different parts of Florida. Yeah, black flag operations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't. I look. If you had told me in a million years that our own government would plant bombs to make it look, what they were trying to do is make it look like socialism in Cuba was taking over our country yeah. and communism and all that shit. Um, I never in a million years would have, would have thought our government would have done shit like that. Really? So the, the reason the FBI exists and the reason it's the most powerful institution in the Department of Justice is because Hoover was a cunt. He, J. Edgar Hoover, one was, uh, I mean, Look, he was a, a transvestite, not a transsexual. He was a transvestite, like wear women's clothes. Okay, right? yeah. And back then, that probably caused him some issues, right? And it, <laughs> made, him, it made him super paranoid yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Sure. And he, applied, he clearly applied that. So, and he had a weird relationship with his mother as well. So that he clearly applied that to his, his profession. But he kept dossiers on every business person and politician in America. Yep. So he could blackmail them to get what he wanted. Basically. But I, I, just ne- I never thought it would go as far as planting bombs in your own country. To make Americans think one thing and then everything else. Why and not? I, the CIA murdered a sitting president. Why would you not expect black flag operations? I, I, here's the thing. I guess because it, you're, you're, you could, you know, it's the potential loss of life in something like that, right? Whereas stealing an election, if that's, you know, if you believe in that, if that's what you believe, that's what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Nobody's getting killed. Nobody's going to lose their life over it. Um, you know, obviously yeah. shit's going to, yeah. Ch- yeah, we'll see. Shit's going to change. <laughs> But um, I, it's it's surprising. So I guess, you know, if you were applying that theory from the 60s and what they were trying to do back then to today, I, would you say that's even possible, Pat? Like, do you are you well, buying I mean, into any a, of this it's, shit? It, it, well, I mean, it. I think it is happening today. Look at the government manipulation of the media and vice versa. Mm. I mean, it, so. I mean, with the with the censorship and uh, with the subliminal manipulation and all that crap, I mean, I think it is I think it is still happening. And I've been censored and shut down myself. I know. Look, look we all have. Um, but I, I don't think the government is necessarily behind yeah. it. Um, but no, look, there's there's certainly something bigger than uh, the United States government at play. Right. Because right. the United States government is too. You, you can't you can't manage 
uh, 500 people. If you put 538 people in a room mm -hmm. plus the president and vice president, so 540 people, that's a, uh, 438 uh, Congress people and 100 senators, the president and vice president, right? People who are elected to federal power. If you put that amount of people in one room and expect them to agree on anything, good fucking luck, right? But if you have four to 10 business people that are wealthy that can leverage influence over these people, influence that gives them money so they can get reelected and all this other protects them from shit and whatever the fuck else, that small amount of people can definitely control an entire country. And we've seen it before. Like we think that's some ridiculous, like, oh, it's ridiculous that a couple of people would be in charge. And it's not like they're in charge of every single thing that happens all the time. They move the needle where they feel like they need to. It's no different than the Roman Senate. It's no different than any of these other oligarch organizations that have existed over the years. It's no different than Russia right now. As a matter of fact, they just do it out in the open because they don't give a fuck. Right. That's the difference. And that's why Trump scared people so much. Well, um, I, I think what's shocking to me is this one doesn't feel like it's our government. It feels like it's a, like four dudes. It feels like it's Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. uh, Jack Dorsey, um, uh, Bezos, and, and uh, uh, whatever is it, Riz, what is his name from uh, Google? I can't remember his name now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The guy from Google, whoever it, doesn't, it is. It doesn't matter, even if they're not doing it intentionally. I think they are doing it intentionally. Even I'm if, surprised the government doesn't stop it. Well, even well, the government doesn't have the power. By the power, I mean people in government are cowards. Politicians are cowards. They're, they're more worried about uh, uh, staying in office than they are about doing the right thing. And that's very clear because otherwise they could shut this shit down right now if they wanted to. The government could get together and be like, hey, you know what? Regardless of politics, these people are fucking over our democracy right now. We got to shut this shit down. You can definitely get 400 people to agree on that. Yeah. Because I could go out in the street right now and find 200, people, 200 conservatives and 200 liberals that definitely agree with that sentiment. So mm -hmm. it's not crazy to think you get people to agree on that. But so, so the, the potentiality is there. They're just cowards. That's yeah. it. Yeah. What, what are you worried about in the next 10 years, Pat, like in your life personally? Nothing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really not. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, have no, uh, I have no great worries, no strife, no trepidation about anything. Why I really don't? Why? Why is that? How are you? How are you so mentally zen? That that's uh, uh, you're not I'm, thinking about it. Well, I I take care of myself, you know, and and my family first, and nobody's going to dissuade me from doing that. And so long as I'm good, you know, I've got solace and 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 uh, security. Yeah, nothing's nothing's going to get in my way. I mean, am, am I going to be adversely affected by some? douchebag politician of course i am you know but but i'm not worried about any uh, anything no nope. that's fucking hilarious dude i look for a badass like you that's the exact answer i was i was wanting to hear but it's like uh <laughs> you actually said it whereas if i said that it'd sound like a fucking douchebag well for <laughs> for Pete, like what i always ask what's the worst that could happen yeah and then i think about it i'm like mm, i've already kind of done that so that's not that big a deal. I mean, let's say the worst thing could happen is somebody can come kill me, then I'm dead. But mm -hmm. the worst that could happen here is that everything breaks down and we're left to fend for ourselves. Like, all right, cool, man. That's we can do yep. that. Yeah. I would I'm not, not too worried about that, <laughs> to be honest. That's why I, I did a great, in my opinion, a great rant, not to pat myself on the back, but a great rant about Antifa about a year ago, uh, where it was like, You better fucking pray. Police don't go away. Police are the only thing protecting you right now. Like if you, you skinny little white bitches in the Pacific Northwest that think if police go away, somehow you're going to start running the show. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, brother, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I will skin you alive in the street and I will use your skin to keep me warm in the wintertime. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. Like you're out of your and, goddamn and I think, mind. I think LEO should have access to voting records. <laughs> uh, yeah. Be well, great I, I like the, I like the opt out thing. So just, uh, this is, this is our idea. Me. Ross, yep. Jared, yep. and uh, Mike the Cop came up with this about, actually it was about a year and a half ago. If you hate cops that much, uh, you can, when you go get your driver's license renewed, you can have an opt-out thing on there, just like a uh, donor card. And they can look it up when they look up your phone number, your address, and like, oh, this person opted out of police coverage because they hate us so much, so we don't have to respond to that. Yeah. Sorry. You can drive yourself to the hospital, bitch. You put a you put a thing on your door that just it's just NP, no police. I'm I'm good to go. So even if I call, don't help me. Don't come to my door. I'm all but, good. But I doesn't, don't need the police. But doesn't that speak to the character of the people that wear uh, the badge in the United States, where you can be spitting in their face, wearing a shirt that says "All cops are bastards" and "Fuck the police," and if you get hurt, they'll come help you immediately without thinking twice yep. about yeah. it. Yeah, that yep. should that should tell you something about the kind of people that are actually in uniform. 
But look, they did for Alyssa Milano. You know, she was on the big yeah. defund the police movement, and then uh-huh. an eight year old was shooting an, uh, an air gun at some squirrels next door. She called the police. Thirty of them rolled up on the house, and she was like, "Oh, I, I thought something else was going on." It's like that ah, doesn't matter what the fuck you thought was going on. You still needed the police at yeah. the end of the day, apparently. Um, do you ever have dreams where somebody breaks in your house and you fucking kill them? Uh, you mean fantasies? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have dreams about it, but I, but I plan for it. Mm. You know, I mean, I, even in my office right now, I mean, I've got this and I've got this right here. Yeah. Just because I have a closed door right in front of me. And, sure. Um, so I, I am not paranoid by a long shot. But, um, you know, we don't plan to fail, but we fail to plan. And uh, I consider myself prepared and ready for just about just about anything. Uh, Has anybody ever fucked with you in a bar in real life? Like or, or your wife? Oh, or yeah, yeah, like yeah. Because because dudes are dicks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Dudes can be dicks. Uh, and I've been in a, a bunch of street fights. They've all gone poorly for the other guy. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, number one, I'm not going to start it. See, if you start it, you deserve to get your ass kicked. Agreed. And number two, you in number two, you've you've got to try. To, you've got to think about you know uh, conflict resolution, and try to avoid it as much as possible. If the guy persists, then he probably deserves to get his ass kicked. Mm. But you got to have a good plan, you know, a, a good strategy in place, and um, and then you have to you have to strike. You have with uh, with ferocity, and with. Uh, the intent to do that guy harm. You know, I have a light switch that goes on and off. Mm-hmm. So if 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 the if the douchebag wants to present, you know, if he wants to go up another level of douchebaggery, um, that light switch comes on, boom, and I say to myself, well, if he enters my zone, he's going down. I'm going into ballistic microfight mode, and you know, it it it, it hasn't happened much. Uh, recently, I think the last time was uh, when I went to the Slayer concert last year. I had to knock some guy out. <laughs> no um, shit. But, last you know, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and he deserved it. He was a bully. He was picking on. Got, it, and there was a group of them. I was in the good seats. You know, I, I bought really good seats. I didn't want that. It was Lamb of God Slayer, bro. I didn't mm. want that fucked up for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, everybody that was Slayer's knew, farewell every, tour, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was not going to miss that. Mm. Oh my God, man. My wife became an instant fan. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she, she wasn't sure about Slayer cause she likes metal to some degree. Right. But when she saw Slayer, she was like, Oh my God, instant fan. Boom. She went, this is, this right here is talent. This is effortless. She was yelling at me. This is effortless. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, they sure know what they're doing. Uh, and what what happened in the fight? Like, was it it, it was uh, it, was it in the I good gave, seats or was it in like the yeah? Pit? It, it was in the it was in the good seats. I was on the aisle. Okay. And and this group kept coming down. Um, they were probably in the nosebleeds or in the grass or something like that, and they kept coming down. And there was a security guard, you know, guarding the next uh, the VIP section. Sure. And they kept coming down, and he was just some, some kid, some young, skinny, hundred twenty pound kid. With a shirt on that said security. He probably got hired for the day. You know, yeah. Something like that. And they were screwing with him. And um, I told them, hey, just get back. And uh, they they did. They pushed back. Uh, and I, I had all these other guys looking at me, you know, in the um, in the good seats. Like, yeah. yeah, that guy needs to freaking go. So I, I knew I had already established some assets in case you know he had more liabilities so i was just, i was establishing rapport with these guys comes down again got in the security guy's face i i and i pushed him this time whoosh so i i drew first blood basically and he went back quite a ways and i said nope 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 just stay right there you don't want any of this trust mm. me you don't want any of this and he freaking charged and bam bam so three quick punches he went down like a sack of shit his buddies come down <laughs> And everybody just starts swinging, whoosh, whoosh. They're out of the seats. And now I'm trying to break up the fight that I started because I didn't want these guys to get kicked out, you know? Right. Yeah. Because here comes all the security, the, the real security. And I was like, no, 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 stop it. Because, uh, you know, these guys paid freaking top dollar for those seats too. And I didn't want them to get kicked out. So now I was trying to break this shit up. 
That's hilarious. So what happens? You give this guy a three piece combo, and then what? Yep. Did, he does, went down like a sack of shit. Whoosh! Right down. Did they got to? Did they got to carry this guy out? Is it? Like no, a no, no. He, he got up. He 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 got up. He <laughs> okay. got up. So it wasn't a. It was a like a uh, like a flash knockout. Hmm. So the two, the one landed flush. The two went right into his fleshy part of his face. So and then the three, because he was already going down, mm -hmm. just grazed the top of his head. So it wasn't a real, I mean, he went down from the one, two, boom, boom. And then as the three was coming across, he was, he was falling. So I kind of missed and grazed the top of his head. But so he went down and then like did a uh, crab walk yeah. backwards and then got up. <laughs> and then they all jumped in. So it was a big melee. It was a big freaking melee. You know, nothing, I mean, very apropos for a Slayer concert mm. yeah that, i mean that's par for the course right you know right. Yeah. uh you grab a beer you, you see somebody get knocked out you're at slayer like we're good to go yeah, on that I was, yeah i did not want it fucked up man you know it was a slight it was i was right there in their grills you know i please don't fuck this up for me it's the last time i'm gonna see these guys. yeah it's like you're uh, about to have a threesome and the girls start arguing it's like hey, yeah, right. ladies, yeah. just relax. Yeah, yeah there's uh, plenty yeah, of dick man. for everyone, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we know how that goes. Um, you're one of the most fascinating dudes on the planet. We could fuck. We could talk to you all day. Uh, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you oh, like cool. to give the uh, drinking bro of the week to? Uh, let me see. I was not prepared for this, but uh, I, there, there are. I've had you know, mentors in the military mm -hmm. um, that have, it, because with, with, without them, I would not be where, where, where to the level I got to. So I needed those mentors, you know, uh, guys like um, uh, my buddy Slappy, you know, he was a big, big mentor. Yeah. Uh, Slappy? Slappy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Slappy, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, but on the outside here, there's a lot of guys I look up to um, that I follow on the the interwebs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, guys like uh, like uh, Chris Duffin and Bert Soren. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <clears throat> so big fitness guys, but also drinking drinking bros as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, Sornex is a good company for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. those guys. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a, I, I on that note. I'm sure other people, uh, and these these guys, well, at least Beckwith is before your time, but yep. I, I wanted to ask you about something. Now, Navy SEALs have this uh, <sighs> this reputation for writing books and blah, 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 mm -hmm. but yep. Eric Haney, the first sergeant major of uh, 1SFO D Delta, and uh, Charlie Beckwith, the guy that started the goddamn organization, both wrote books. So yep. what's happening? What <laughs> Are they PNG or, or how does that, I mean, I don't, I don't Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there were, for a long time, there were several guys, several plank holders in the unit were trying to bring up charges on uh, Haney. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, Haney, for, for, Haney, Haney went a little farther than, mm -hmm. than Beckwith. Beckwith wrote a book about how to do organization for special operations units, basically. Yep. Haney yep. got into television. That's a whole different kind of situation, right. obviously. But, you yep. know, I... Do you think now with global media the way it is and how, look, there's no secrets about who, I mean, look, there, there are to some degree, like the unit, mm -hmm. the unit changes its name frequently and blah, blah, blah. So you don't know what the actual name is, but everybody knows what the fuck it is. Yep. Everybody knows what the mission is at this point. Mm -hmm. So at what point do we have to accept that and start not talking openly about it, but at least allow, because the, telling those stories, I think is really important for people to understand one, the level of sacrifice, that's important. But even mm -hmm. more so right now in this debate about troop reduction is the level of capability that we have with much smaller assets than what we would normally need to deploy or what another country might need to deploy. We can operate with a very lean team and get a lot of shit done. And it's what we should have done in the la over the last 20 years instead of this stupid bullshit we've been doing for whatever reason. We, we should have just been re-executing Anaconda over and over and over again. That's all we share, in my opinion. But <clears throat> anyways, do you think being a little bit more open about that stuff can help change the narrative a little bit and, and stop using superfluous amounts of force, which is, I mean, in my opinion, the only reason we're sending massive troops is to, to, for the military industrial complex. It has nothing to do with the goal because what the fuck is the goal? I don't know. 
And I wonder what somebody who is an operator thinks about that. Well, you know, you say that, you know, we know what's going on, but I mean, there have been so many, like just over the past two years, so many operations that have never oh, made yeah. a, never been a bleep on the media's radar. And I'm talking big stuff. And I think a level of anonymity is good. You know, I, I sure. told my wife one night, I said, dark people do dark things in mm. dark places of the world. And nobody reads, really needs to know that what For the sure. fuck is going on. Yeah. Man. Because I think that anonymity adds to uh, that level of security. You know, I, I'm still privy to some stories, mm. you know, w- with guys who are active. And I'm, I'm just blown away, you know, living vicariously through it. I'm mm. like, holy shit, I can't believe you guys did that stuff, man. I mean, it is badass. And I'm, I'm, it, it shows a level of discipline too, mm. you know, that, um, that holy crap, man, we can keep a secret, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, we can keep this, yeah, yeah. we can, <clears throat> we can uh, prevent this from being full disclosure. So I, I, it makes me happy knowing that there, there are a lot of things going on that us first worlders, you know, we don't need to fucking, we don't need to worry about it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, my wife says that all the time. She was like, hey, man, why do we need to know about all this shit? Uh, wouldn't it be better as Americans if we just didn't know and left that job to people who could actually execute it so the rest of us can go uh, heat up a hot pocket in the middle yeah. of the night and feel safe? Yeah, right. It would be yeah. nice if you could uh, Dead serious. Yeah. Trust, your, yep. trust your government. Yeah. yeah, That would be nice. Yeah. We'll get maybe next time. <laughs> maybe in the other life, brother. Uh, Pat, thank you for being with us. Where can everybody find you? Well, I am uh, T Max Inc. So that's my uh, IG handle and my webpage, uh, T M A C S I N C, T Max Inc. And uh, I'm also combat strength training. And uh, I'm uh, also my podcast, The University of Badassery, with CJ Ortiz, the metal motivator. Um, so those are the main, my main platforms right there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, man, uh, you're a motivational dude. Uh, super inspiring. We're, we're grateful that you spent some time with us today. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. For Pat McNamara, uh, this is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Rock and roll, baby. Thanks, guys.